Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The first part of my title is Fat, Dumb, Happy. That has been used before to describe what the French call la condition humaine. It applies to many people today. The second part, under surveillance, that's my own edition, and that's what I want to talk about now. I will take you on a short tour along voting, electronic reading of news and books. I'll show you what goes well, what goes right with voting, and what goes wrong with electronic reading. And in this way, I'll reach my conclusions about the flow of information. So let me start with voting. I like this picture very much. What I like in it is that it shows the well-regulated character of voting in modern democracies. Inside the voting station, no political advertisement is allowed. Of course, you're not allowed to go with two people inside a single voting booth. And once you're in there, you don't get the proof of what you voted in order to prevent vote selling or coercion. We are, so to say, forced to be super free. We're forced to be completely autonomous in expressing our uh, precious personal vote inside this little voting booth. Now, this idea of protecting and shielding the individual has become a bit rare, maybe so rare that we forget the point of it. I will illustrate this now. So let's start with reading news. Many of us now read the news online via apps like these. This one is called new.nl, which literally translates to now.nl. It's the most popular app in the Netherlands for reading news online. Can I have a quick raise of hands? Who here in the audience has this app installed on a smartphone or tablet or whatever? You see, almost everyone. Now, I did not install this app, <clears throat> and let me explain to you why. If you look into this, and you look into the permissions that this app requires, you'll find out that it requires access to your location and to your account. The people at new.nl use these data to uh, track you for years, to register every click you make, where and when, and from this click stream, they extract an elaborate profile of who they think you are. This profile is then used to sell advertisement slots on the pages that they send to you. Now, I find it ridiculous that a simple news app wants to know who you are and where you are, but what I find more shocking, most shocking actually, is that when I talk to people about this, this is the typical reaction I get. <laughs> people just don't seem to care. Now, this is remarkable because we're talking about a very serious matter. We're talking about intelligence gathering 2.0. In the past, <laughs> in, in, the, <laughs> in the past, you had to torture people to get their communication details. These days, you write a silly app, and all the fools in the world <laughs> click OK, 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 and let the app plunder their most precious personal data. Remember this? All of you in the audience had to apply online to get a seat in this beautiful hall. You were confronted with this form. It asked for your name, your physical address, your email address, your addresses in various social media, even your date of birth. Completely irrelevant information. But almost all of you obediently, obediently provided this information. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we just don't understand the value of digital information. If I walk up to an arbitrary person in the street and ask, can I have your front door key, the typical reaction is go away, and rightly so. But if you ask people online to fill out a silly form, or even worse, to ask, uh, you ask for their login details, many people respond. Face palm. Let me talk about reading books. <clears throat> we, as academics, try to convey to our students the importance of concentrated reading and studying. It's something you do in the privacy of your own mind. And when submerged like this, many, many of us start underlining sentences or writing things in the margin. Now, this is the modern way of reading. These devices are very nice and convenient, especially if you're traveling. They also allow you to write things in the margin. 
and to underline sentences also. <coughs> but have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered where these deeply personal marginal notes of yours are stored? Well, <coughs> if your device comes, for instance, from the online bookseller Amazon, then by default, these notes are stored at Amazon. This means, for instance, when you're reading, let's say, Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, <coughs> you, you, you get very enthusiastic, you start writing in the margin, ooh, this is hot, I should try this myself sometime. <laughs> <laughs> then all this information ends up in the computers of Amazon. Now, I'm sure there are people at Amazon that see various commercially interesting ways to exploit these revelations and to send you some very well-targeted personal services. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> on a more serious note, uh, what is behind all this? Uh, why are all these organizations so shamelessly trying to get under our skin? The reason is, ladies and gentlemen, information is money is power. The more I know about you, the easier it is for me to steer your behavior, or even to manipulate you, or even worse, to try and steal your identity and ruin your life. Ladies and gentlemen, had, had Karl Marx been alive today and still interested in writing a book about power structures in the world, he would not call this book Das Kapital, but De Information. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not arguing against technology. On the contrary, uh, technology can be used in a privacy-friendly manner, at least if we deliberately choose to use it in such a way. And here in Dijon, Megan, in my research group, we're working on such technology. This, for instance, allows you to prove, when you're buying a bottle of whiskey, to prove that you're over 18 and nothing else. Nothing else. Now, the really interesting question is, who on earth decides that we should start using this kind of privacy-friendly technology? Okay, I'll come to my conclusions. <clears throat> I think, ladies and gentlemen, we just don't understand the value of digital information yet. Throughout the centuries, governments have gone to great lengths to regulate the flow of money and to control, to prevent abuse. I think it's now time we do the same for information. The information giants in the world have disproportional power and influence. The Googles, Facebooks, etc., you know them. They, they are introducing this kind of socially invasive technology, like Google Glass, as if they own our private lives. As if they own our private lives. And this is what I object to. Now, how do you, how do you regulate uh, the flow of information? This is a topic of its own. Um, let me just say one thing about this. The main message is keep information in context. Remember what I said in the beginning about voting. Respecting and protecting the individual is the basis of our democracy. And also it's the basis of a balance of power. Thank you very much. Have a very nice day.